Welcome to the last part of the call center building setup and I just want to say the concrete went down well but we then reinforced the, the beams and well we put some steel beams in underneath to actually uh, help support the cross member because the buildings are fairly rectangular long um, it needed some cross sections in there so we welded some steel bars and basically just to, as an extra support just in case um, the upstairs although now in a stage of water type it still needed the windows doing but pretty much everything else was fine we're still getting birds flying in and on a daily basis um, I think they seem to love it in there to keep out the, uh, the, the hot sun in the afternoons Another thing we had an issue with was flooding in the area. Um, although this was a government road as such, every year I try to build it up. I've been putting rocks in there for the last seven years. But also because we'd actually moved and taken another compound on next to the compound we're in, we're now extending the road upwards in the hope that the other neighbours take the same sort of responsibility in understanding that the government ain't going to do it in the next 20 years but it doesn't cost a lot to fix it I mean these stones cost I think it was one half thousand pesos a truckload um, when we put I think it was three truckloads in just to bring the the footpath level up um, basically just to lift you out of the mud Adding to that, because I'm sure someone's going to say, well, what about drainage? Well, we are actually the only people who have actually installed drainage into the, the street that actually runs to the river. Uh, nobody else has, which is the problem, because uh, a lot of this water runs from the next neighborhood, etc., and is not actually from our street. Continuing to seal up the building, uh, we exposed the roof uh, structure and could see it was it'd been termite attack but not heavily but made the decision to put it right because I, like I said I do everything long term so once this is actually done properly it's good for the next 20 or 50 years which is why we stripped it all out and started again poor drainage and poor guttering does a lot of damage to buildings um, but as you've seen on the last bit it also causes flooding so we made sure that the roof line was right, uh, the drainage was right, we put in a soak away which is why we heavily use uh, what we call shingle which is the loose stone um, on the ground rather than concrete in because the Philippines has this obsession with concrete and everything. The problem with concreting is it creates a surface area that has no soak away as such you're pushing water onto other areas because your your water will flow off the concrete but it will go into the street it will go into the road it will go everywhere except into the river or somewhere where it actually can be disposed of it just creates another problem for somebody else I'm trying to move away from that and trying to show other people this is the way to do it the new boards going in are they would say termite proof but simply the termites just don't like them um, we then fill all the gaps with a body filler then undercoat it then prime it then paint it takes several coats takes several days but once it's done it's done for a few years as you can see the nails we use as well are the, the galvanized type not the type that will rust we, we made sure the guys bought all the right stuff Next we're sorting out the main power into the house. As you can see this isn't exactly the best with a couple of splice cables dangling from the roof. Um, we ended up putting a new post in and basically doing it properly. First room to be 100% complete was my office. Uh, not by choice but basically it was the easiest one to finish. Um, so I moved in here quite early on because it allowed me to actually separate my bedroom from the server room because at that time the server was at the bottom of my bed. Next was the call center room. Um, basically 
this room was where the main hub was. It was designed for 15 people. We got enough space to actually go in other areas, but initially I wanted to downsize a bit, maintain what we had up in the other office, but make this a much nicer office and see how it went. If it was looked after, I would expand it out into other rooms. Um, I was, I'm very lucky to have a mother-in-law that's an amazing seamstress and also a father-in-law that's a tailor. So making the covers for the actual call center were pretty easy and our uh, carpenter, builder, shop fitter, um, Arnhem basically made the cubicles plus I think yeah we transferred some from the house that we were renting as well which we had a 10 cubicles in um, that gave us the basic structure then we actually made the cubicle space bigger we covered them laminated them and made them all very nice now before the building could become operational um, now people know I'm not religious myself but I do actually respect other people's religions um, so in this case my mother and father-in-law my wife etc are Catholics and they believe in blessing buildings houses etc so in this case the building was blessed by a priest I have no issue with it is respecting other people's uh, beliefs and religion um, my opinion on it is irrelevant because the it's what makes them happy and that's that's what matters the other side of this being that now that the office was built we started to move into more complicated types of work um, web design SEO work uh, graphics design uh, transcription we were transcribing uh, various things from legal documentation to Japanese football commentaries and other <laughs> interesting unique stuff TV and video shows we transcribe for TV uh, channels for the hard of hearing so the business is sort of evolving into something far more complex than when it first started but as we develop we upgrade because uh, I'm I like to invest in people I like to show that this is what you're worth you helped achieve this rather than milking it for the cash it's not how I work I want people to want to work there I want to pay more than everybody else I want people to actually feel that they are actually worth something and belong there now you probably noticed the upstairs wasn't finished before um, there's a reason for this it didn't need to be finished we weren't actually going to need it for up to one two years but what we do is we funnel cash there as such we have a good month on stuff I do on eBay or whatever we'll add windows and slowly build the upstairs up without any financial risk on anything else now currently it's well, September 2015 the upstairs it's glazed the doors are there it's just needing the roof finished and the electrics wiring through and doing the layout nice expensive kitchen etc because it's very likely to become a three bedroom apartment for me and my wife and then the one that we currently have on the other building will become another rental um, but this will give us a, a a base for us when we go back but also my brother-in-law and his partner are in Macau so they've got somewhere to start when they come back as well. It becomes a basically a family three-bedroom apartment, so that we um, have somewhere to go to, you know. But those side has been, which is the bit I haven't really talked about, is we function as a unit. We function as a family. Um, everybody helps everybody else out. You see, like I see, you see my mother-in-law, father-in-law working away making the materials for the. Um, covers for the cubicles but you also find my father-in-law does the welding you'll find my mother-in-law supervises on the side as well heavily involved we all work together as a team and that's why we're quite successful in the Philippines I, I think a lot of expats don't have that connection because they assume everybody's after something but we just work at a a team for everything so 
everybody prospers. It's as simple as that. Is this journey coming to an end in the Philippines? It's still only the beginning. The building's still there, it's still functional. I'm now currently looking to develop more business ideas. I've had several people approach me with various projects and I'm still looking for other projects because what happens is sometimes it may not be ideal for me, but due to my quite large network, I can find people to do pretty much anything. Um, purely because I've been on the internet st stuff since, well, since time began, I think. <laughs> but no, the, the fact is I do have a lot of contacts from various things. A lot of people have followed my blogs and stuff for nearly a decade. And as such, you meet all sorts of people and they're all interconnected. You learn this guy is good at 3D CAD design, for example. This guy is good at um, designing uh, tools for tool making. You have all these various skill sets that become available to you. Um, one, of the, one of the guys, for example, in the Philippines makes custom chromed wheels for motorbikes. There's all sorts of stuff that people don't even know exist. You don't realize that these people do this thing, which is why when people do approach and say, Matt, do you know where I can find there's probably a good chance I can find them. If I don't know already, I'll probably know where to look. But yeah, this is still our beginning of our journey. And if you've got any interest in helping build the business up or getting involved, please feel free to get in touch. Thanks for watching and thanks for going through my videos with me.